Hello, thank you so much for joining me today. Um, I've, I've got loads to show you today, so I'm going to try and speak to you as quick as possible. Um, I just I want to say uh, a few apologies if you follow me on social media. Uh, I feel like I've bombarded you with uh, pictures of projects, and um, it's just that sometimes it's just it works out that way that everything seems to fall together at the same time. And you've got loads to post and then I go for a bit of a spell and I've got nothing to post it goes a bit quiet again so I'm sorry if you think gosh she's made something else and it probably looks like all I do all day is sit around crafting all day but it's really not the case Um, I do like hand stitching and knitting and, and that kind of thing and crochet in the evenings in front of the telly not every night you know so it's like sometimes I do through certain programs that ones that you want to watch but they're not have you having you on the edge of your seat kind of program and uh, my husband watches a lot of football so I try and do soon when he's watching football and things and, uh, and because um, he supports Liverpool and um, and they won you know they've won they're in like things extra um, things like Champions League and things so he has a lot more football to watch so actually um, it's good if Liverpool do really well they're in the top four because they get loads more matches and I get loads more crafting time. So that's, you know, so sorry if you think I'm like absolutely bombarding you, but um, but you might not follow me on social media. So you've been blessed. You haven't had to put up with it. And another thing I thought, I've, I've got a whole list of things. Another thing I thought I'd mention, if you've been following me for a while, you will remember I used to have Rafe. I bought this for my dog, uh, Rafe, because he was used to pine when I came in here in the craft room. But he's, he's not pining like he used to. He's, he's a lot, I think it's because we um, we changed the fencing in the garden. Um, so it's safe for them to go out in the garden a bit more. My husband's been out in the garden a lot. So I think they've been happy because my husband, I've mentioned this before, has been building a man cave in the garden. And uh, and, and he's been, been a bit more occupied. And, um, and when I was bringing in in, in a, the last couple of videos that I bought him in, he um he was distracting me quite a bit. So if if I've got a lot to show, I don't really want that kind of distraction. And I know I distract myself with my phone because I record on my phone. Uh, I get loads of notifications. I just had one come up then, and um and I've realised I can put it in aeroplane mode, which I'd stop getting any notifications, which would be, which would be great. But my doorbell is connected to my phone and I am expecting deliveries. And now I know how to piece videos together. If somebody comes to the door, I am able to stop the video and start it again. And I'm able to piece those together. But that was something I, ne I wasn't able to do. And another thing I think I've learned how to do is add wording to my videos. So do you know if I watch my video back and I say something wrong and I think, oh, I can't believe it. I, I did it last time. When I did my video last time, I was on about my clothesline and I was saying that it's a bit weighty and I think I'm going to need a rod. But I didn't say a rod. I said, I think I'm going to need a peg. And I thought, oh, what am I saying? Of course, I'm going to need a peg and a washing line. So... I think I can put words up now because before when I put words up, I'd put a word up and then that same word would be there to the end of the video. So I think, I think I can get this light thing pop up and go again. So if I make a mistake, um, hopefully I don't, I might be, ha be able to do it. And that's if I notice the mistake, that's it. So today's chat is going to be about makes and it's going to be like things of uh, knitted, sewn, crocheted and dressmaking um, and a Mandy Shaw unboxing which is slightly delayed this month however that's probably a good thing because I think there's probably not one person that hasn't received their um, Mandy parcel this month so I mainly do this for people that don't receive the uh, boxes so they can kind of see what you get but um, sometimes if there's a bit of confusion about what you get then sometimes I can help, especially if I've made something already. But uh, there has been some confusion with the box this month and I haven't done something, but I'll talk about that later on. Right, so uh, I generally tell you uh, about what I've made in kind of the order that I've made it. I kind of look back on my Instagram and I have a look at what I've made. So looking back, um, the, la the next thing I made after I last did a video and I did some more knitting 
and uh, and I told you that I've been knitting the creepy crew from a magazine now I've shown you this magazine before but I don't show it every time but I've actually bothered to bring the magazine down this time and it's the knitted toy collection by Amanda Berry um, I've told you about this before that I saw it I didn't buy it regretted it went back and they had one however if you've got I don't know if everybody can do this I'm not sure but I've got an Apple iPad and uh, and you can buy magazines on there and have magazine subscriptions and I do that now because I'm trying not to hoard loads of magazines but um, on the Molly Makes magazine app if you go to the specials this magazine is in there so uh, if this isn't in print and you can't get this and you want it uh, you can get it on there there's probably other ways but that is one way of getting it and uh, and I've shown you the ones I've made already um, I've made the cat the the spider let me have a look for them the cat the spider you've seen the hats the pumpkin and i think that's all you had seen but i've gone on and i've made two more I'll just pop that there and i've made two more and um the first one i made was frankenstein's monster i've got him here uh, what I'll do is I'll um I'll pop a photograph of him up so you can see it here. Hopefully that's popping up. But I've got him here just to kind of show you the size of them. They're all tiny like this, and um and I, I just oh I fell in love with him. I just thought how cute is he, and and I went on to make uh, Dracula. So I'll, I'll pop a photograph of him because I don't know how well you can see them, but obviously it's better me holding them because you can see them for size then can't you so uh they're all sitting in one of my boys bedrooms now um there's that six that i'd made now there are eight altogether but um i hadn't i'm not talking about this now yes i am talking about i'll put some notes here um i couldn't do the ghost because i wanted to use the same kind of yarn for all of them and when i went to hobbycraft um, they'd only they hadn't got any white in so I've ordered it and there's been a delay with my order um, and then I've been into Hobbycraft since and they've got white in so I could I, I could have just oh shall I buy it and I didn't and another one is a bat and um, and I've actually started the bat um, I've knitted the body I've basically put his eyes in done his face and stuffed him and things I've made one wing and I've started knitting the other wing but I wouldn't be able to totally finish him because you need the white yarn for his fangs so uh, when that white yarn turns up I'll be able to do that and do the ghost I was in two minds oh shall I do those two uh, and I thought you know what why not let's just do all eight of them I've done the whole thing and actually um like I I think without sounding boastful I'm kind of okay at doing faces on things and uh, and I don't always totally copy what the designer's done sometimes I do play something different but anyway I've done the bat I've done his face and uh, the face doesn't look like the designer's uh, <laughs> mine it if I'm gonna use it, yeah I'd say he looks derpy now I've learned that word derpy from because I've got boys I've never heard that word until I've got teenage sons and kids and whatever I can't give you a definition of what derpy means but I kind of know when to use it and I think the boys would say face he's got a derpy face but my youngest seen it and he's like oh mom that is so cute it's so good so I can't wait to show you the bat next time so uh so that is the creepy crew um all done and dusted there are other makes in here um I'm going to be knitting later on um and they'll be Christmas makes so that is what I've done up until that point so I'll cross all that out um is there anything of me that ah right yeah that's what i wanted to say to you i i am expecting deliveries and i've got to show you this right uh do you know if you've ever had anything delivered have you ever had an email and they send you a photograph 
of where they've left it. And it could be by your own property, it could be with a neighbour. Anyway, I had a delivery recently and I'm going to show you what the delivery is during this video. But uh, I went, I heard the bell and I went to the door and the lady was there and I said, oh, thank you and took it in, didn't think anything of it. Then later on, I had an email saying, your parcel has been delivered. This is where we left it. Now, this is the photo they sent me. I'm going to put the photograph up. And I thought it was so funny. And yes, that is me in pyjama bottoms with my slippers on. And I thought, why has she even bothered to take the photo and send it to me? Because I'm in the photograph. So um, I've showed my family and we all think it's hilarious. And uh, my husband's joking, oh, uh, I spy the fox because I've got my uh, slippers, my fox slippers on. So that was quite funny. Anyway, so what happened next? The next thing I started to do is because I was waiting for yarn, uh, I still had got twitchy knitting fingers. So I started to knit something else. But that was going on probably over little bits over three nights, right? So I'll show you that in a minute. Then in my daytime or whenever it was, day or evening, whenever I got to get in my craft room, uh, I decided to make some cushion covers. Now, in my last video, I showed you a Halloween panel um, that I bought. It was um, a panel with six rectangles. They were like rectangles. Like the design was like, say, this is the design this way up. They were like rectangles, but they were quite long. So uh, I made an a, uh, a little pinny apron out of the one. And I've shown you that before. Maybe I'll put a picture on there. I don't know. You've seen it in the last video. But I I still had five panels left so I measured them out and I thought I'd like to make some cushions um, I suppose I could have made like a pillow style but they were the wrong way the length was that way so I measured the width of each panel and, uh, and I worked out what kind of uh, size cushion I could get and it was a bit of an awkward size really it was teething on a larger one but I had to go down I think I went for a, a 12 inch cushion in the end so I, I ordered five 12 inch cushions I made all the cushion covers. I did post those in a post individually of each one and then the backs of them and um, on, on my social media. And then luckily enough, the next day, uh, the cushions arrived. So I managed to stuff them. The sizes of the cushions, they were all slightly different. I did measure them from seam to seam and they were all slightly different. But overall, they looked OK and I've displayed those in my porch and I'm really pleased with them. And um, I'll pop a photograph of that on. And if you wonder, there is a hexagon type thing underneath. And that's just something I made ages ago, a little quilty project I made by cutting out six uh, you know, same strips together and cutting 60 degree angles. And I just put that under there to display. Generally, I usually put that as a bit of a table runner kind of thing. Um, so that is that. So that's that whole page covered. So that's good. Then I went on to make pumpkins. Now, I've made a pumpkin before. And literally, um, I don't, I didn't have a pattern for this, not from what I remember. I literally cut a circle of fabric. I've got no idea what size um, I cut it out at because um, I just don't remember. It was so long ago I made it. Uh, I gathered all the edges up, um, stuffed it, and then I basically kept on sewing through the middle and going round and round and round to get all the segments. It kind of looks like bit like the, an orange when you've peeled it really doesn't it I did put a little something on it a little stalk um but I didn't attach it and it's fallen off so it does look like an orange segment now doesn't it so when I was in um Mandy Shaw's Secret Society the 2018 to 2019 uh, one of the little projects we received and it came with the supplies um was a pumpkin and I've only just got round to making it. I had a bit of a sewing afternoon. It was a bit of a spontaneous one. Um, I didn't need to pick up my youngest son from school because my husband did it. And my husband went on an evening appointment. And, and I just made a bit of time in the craft room while he, the boys were busy. So I thought I'll go in the craft room. So I managed to get a bit of extra sewing done that time that I wouldn't normally get. 
and I made the pumpkin from that secret society and uh, basically came with the twirly garden twine. I think I was supposed to attach it there but I've kind of done it underneath the leaf um, and you you know basically the pattern pieces and you cut this off. This works different to this one Basically, you work all segments together. You cut out segments that had pointy ends and you basically, I'm hoping this video is working, yeah. I think it's because I've got a different phone. It's doing different things and I'm a bit worried that it's actually recording. And they had pointy ends. So you literally, you had to leave each end a quarter of an inch when you sewed all the segments together. Um, and then that helped at the end. And what did you do? And you had to leave and then a side bit open, a little gap, a, a turning gap, and then you stuffed it and then you did the same thing, but you're sewing through the edge and you put the leaf and I did a blanket stitch around that. And I'm really delighted with that. Um, I've, I have got a photograph of my three pumpkins that I've made together, so I'll pop that on in a minute. So you might see that a little bit better then maybe. Then, uh, in the Secret Society this year, this month's project, I know I haven't done an unboxing yet, I am doing the Mandy Shaw unboxing, but the, a bonus project that you got to download was actually a set of three pumpkins. You didn't get the supplies, but you could buy the supplies from Mandy. Um, but the, I don't know, um, I might be wrong, but uh, Mandy doesn't normally do this, but I don't know if she sold all of her kit packs. So actually people that aren't in the secret society are actually, she shared it so people are actually allowed to buy this kit for these pumpkins and I ordered it and it came in a pack of all bits like this and um, and I've made one of them. I did cut out two leaf, that's what the leaf looked like. And I did cut out two leaves, there's lots of felt, it's mainly felt and one fabric. And the fabric looked like this. This is my pumpkin. And uh, I don't know how that looks on camera, but I was thinking um, tomato. It does look like a big tomato. And, uh, and we had a lovely time because I went out with my home educated son and we went out looking for twigs um, to put through the centre. So we was out with our tape measure, measuring twigs in the outdoors, which was a bit of maths as well, isn't it? So, uh, and he did say, have you made a big tomato when he first saw it? And, uh, but I suppose what it is, um, pumpkins, if you look up um, pumpkins, you might get a whole picture of all these orange smooth pumpkins. But if you get a really, like if you put like pumpkin colours or something, you'll get all these variety and you can get knobbly pumpkins red pumpkin you can get all kinds of colors of pumpkins and uh, so yeah so it is fitting but if you're someone that's only ever seen an orange pumpkin you are going to think tomato aren't you so what i kind of did for the photo so people didn't think i've made a big pin cushion tomato i kind of like layered them all up and took a photo so i'll put pop that photograph on and um, these have been sitting um i put them on top of my um thing that we hook things on for the photograph but um now i've got them on the floor um in my porch and they look nice well they're in here at the minute to show you but um but um i've, I've only made basically that's the largest one if you make up the largest one, that's how big it is. Um, but there are um, two other sizes. I'll grab the, I'm going to grab actually the pattern pieces to show you. Um, that's the largest, the segments. And actually the big one was different. It had flat ends, so you literally sewed to the end. So when you sewed all the segments together, you had an open end at each end, so you didn't need to leave a turning gap. The small one that I showed you, it had a point look, but these have got like flat ends on either side. So that's the largest. That's uh, that's the one from the previous Secret Society. That That's the medium. Oh no, sorry, that's the medium and that's the small to show you the differences there and you do get a base piece this squiggly bit but I didn't actually use the base piece 
I just gathered it up around the stick and I just left that. So, um, and this one, um, this one had a base from the previous video. It had just a circle and I did put that circle on. So that is that. Uh, is there anything else I need to say? Um, yeah, basically the Secret Society 2018, that was the project and on the back it was felt poppies as well. And I think you can get this pattern for this small one. Um, Mandy released um, a book that basically covered all the projects we got in the 2018 to 2019 Secret Society. Obviously you don't get the supplies, it's just the book, but I think that will probably be in that book. So um, so you might have that if you're a, a Mandy collector. So I'll pop those there. Uh, so that is the pumpkins I made. I made two, but there's a couple more. Whether I'll make those, I don't know. Um, my fabrics, I kind of would like to keep those felt. And if I made any more, do them in uh, cotton fabric. So unless I go shopping and get some um suitable colour a cotton fabric I won't be making any more because I've had a look all around my craft room and I've got so many fabrics so many colours but nothing suitable for pumpkins unfortunately well not to my taste anyway so anyway so I carried on knitting and, uh, and what I was knitting, now it isn't a part of the creepy crew, but it is Halloween inspired and it's um, a voodoo doll. Now there's no harm, I'm not going to try and, you know, pin anybody or wish anybody any harm, but I just got a thing about this voodoo doll. I've seen a fabric one before that I have planned on making and I never got round to it, but here is my little voodoo doll. If you can see, it's a... Uh, it's bigger than the, um, I don't know whether to call he or she, um, there is a little pink heart. I'll tell you what, I'll pop a photograph on that I, I take, I talk of um, the voodoo doll sitting on top of a, a ball of yarn that I'd um, wound up. But um, so that, was, but I just love it. I just think it's so cute, isn't it? And uh, it is bigger than the creepy crew. If it, it was a bit more involved really than the creepy crew because there was a lot more shaping to do it had individual arms and legs and things so uh yeah and actually there was um a stitch where you uh, had to do that i thought i wasn't familiar i had to look at the abbreviations you were doing like three you were like increasing a stitch one stitch into three and on the next row decreasing it back again i think it was to do with the tummy actually around that area but yeah that was really enjoyable i just i love making things whether it's sewing or knitting or crochet that have got faces i just love making something and just watching it come to life it's like with the bats they're just their character comes alive and it's just they're just lovely it's just I've just got this thing about it so uh, I'm really happy with my voodoo doll and I don't even though um like I don't know what my son will do when it's not Halloween whether he'll want them in his bedroom all year round but I don't think I don't think I'm wanting to have this one I think this is going to be a knitting basket mascot and it's staying out all year round I don't see me wanting wanting to put that away really so that is that and how oh and who, the designer sorry the designer is amanda berry the same as the creepy crew and i got the pattern from etsy and i paid three pound fifty to download that pattern so if you're interested that's that and i obviously love amanda berry's um patterns i have knitted amanda berry's patterns before so Right, I, I, there's going to be more sewing, definitely dressmaking, unboxing and whatever. So I'm sorry if you're here just for dressmaking, but I am getting to it. Um, then I revisited a project, right? Now what happened is, years ago, I decided I wanted a crochet autumn wreath. So I crocheted up the bit to go around the wreath and sewed it on. I crocheted loads and loads of little bits and I know it was years ago and then it sat in a basket and I never did anything with it and I didn't even know if I had enough things to fill it up or you know to look nice 
and uh, I think, right, I've put a note, I think I got the pattern from a magazine called Inside Crochet. Um, I can't tell you what year, I can't tell you the designer, and I, and I don't even know for sure if all the bits that I made for it were for, and that magazine, I probably doesn't all manner of things. It's been that long, I really don't know. Now, what made me think of it? I have thought about it other um, autumn times and then I've never got round to it. But I was watching a Chanda and there was a designer on there. Let me see if I can see a name. Well, I don't know what the designer's name is, but her company is called The Crochet Craft. Co. And I don't think she's been crocheting that long. I think she said about three years. Hang on, I just have a sip of my coffee. I haven't stolen this cup, by the way, from Costa. It was um, a gift. I think I bought it my husband. I got it from Boots. You know when Boots have all these foody Christmas gifts? And uh, and I got a Costa cup. So, excuse me, it's getting a bit cold, actually. Well, this designer was selling this crochet um autumn reef kit now it made me think of my own and there were some really quirky little critters on it and I thought to myself oh they would look lovely if I finished my autumn reef and I put those critters on it so I ordered the kit with my birthday money I had no intention really of crocheting all this um wreath up uh, I felt a little bit guilty actually. I, I think I'm a bit too sentimental. So there was a little note from the designer saying, Enjoy making your wreath. And I thought, Well, I'm, I'm not going to be making it. I'm going to be taking bits of it and putting it on mine. However, I'm going to try and do something with it. But this is what got delivered right. This was the thing when you saw my foot uh, in that picture this is what was getting dumped at my front door and I'll pop my notes here a minute now it this it's quite a big I wonder if I can get this out oh gosh I'm gonna drop the yarns all over the shop oh that's not a part of that yarn oh get rid of that right I think I'm ripping this actually right <laughs> not the thing I'm ripping the bag I think oh gosh gone I'm dropping everything this is how big it is it's quite big isn't it now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you my reef when it was all in a bunch of bits I'm going to put a picture graph of that on there now so that was the reef that I'd made and all the little bits so I've sewn it all on now and you might have seen this on social media I'm dropping this everywhere right let, let me grab these I probably should cut a bit of this out I'll go hunting for dropped yarn ball, um, balls after the video uh, this is what I've done so far now there's a couple of bits I haven't used yet I've, the only bits I have uh, that picture I showed you those are the only two things I've not sewn on two leaves but everything else that you saw on that picture I've stitched on now I'll tell you what I'll pop a photograph of it on for you to see that might be better for you to see and I have got it here so this is it I don't know how well this is going to look on camera and um and this this is mine I, I, I'm holding it straight I don't know which way I think it's kind of that way so the the picture might be better for you to see so what I'm planning on doing is I don't want to totally cover this because I've got stripes and things on mine so I might put the odd critter here and there just to fill it up but look at the difference this is why i've got this out to show you that would be a fabulous one wouldn't it look at the size difference in that i haven't measured these so i don't know so i'm not going to waste this i will at some point um crochet it up but i don't the yarn that you're supposed to crochet it in is um this color which is nice but it is very autumnal isn't it so i don't know if i will cover it in that i'm not sure yet um rustic pink it's called so i don't know if i don't know what so this will be a future thing I? so basically what i'm going to be doing from this i'm going to be crocheting critters to go on my current autumn wreath 
and this will be a future a future wreath of some kind um it could be spring it could be summer i did even consider doing it halloween and i could put all the little things around it couldn't i i think that would be pretty awesome for a halloween one but it's whether my son who's fallen in love with them uh will go for it so unless i want to knit them all over again but i don't think i've got the will to do that right now right so anyway so that is that i think i've lost my pen no i've not lost my pen right um so now the next make it is dress making now i could have wore it in my video but i thought well i won't wear it um because um you know what i'll just i'll show it you and maybe i'll wear it in a future video but it's definitely cozy enough to wear in here and you've probably you might have seen it already because i did um i basically cut it out on friday today's monday i cut it out on friday i sewed it on saturday and i photographed it on sunday uh and now I'm telling you about it Monday. Hopefully you will get this video on Monday, but it all depends on how long it takes me to put all the photographs in and everything. So I have finally made, now you will know I was going to make a jumper. That's what I told you. I told you quite a while ago that I was going to be making jumpers, but then I ended up being a pattern tester doing the code, which I still can't show you because the pattern's not been released, so I'm not allowed. But I made the Grain Line uh, Studio Linden sweatshirt. I'm going to show you this pattern here. I want you to look at the neck. Now, the neck is quite small, isn't it? Um, what it is, the reason I mention this is somebody has seen mine on Instagram. I've got a comment I noticed this morning. And she said, have you watered the neck? Now, I know what she means because after I made it, um, I had a look, I wondered how long this pattern had been released. It, I can't, oh, I can't remember now the year, it could have been 2014 or something, but it's years old now. But on the designer's website, the neck is a lot bigger. So I had a little poke around and I've seen a lot of linden sweaters and the neck is larger than this. So I don't know if this has been revamped at some point, but no, I didn't alter it at all. Um, that I've, I basically didn't make. I made version A, the long sleeve jumper, and I didn't make any alterations. I just chose a size and cut it out. Now, about the sizing, I've circled this. Um, my bust measurements is exactly on the size four. These aren't like your typical UK sizes um they, they're sizing i don't know if it's american or whatever but um my bus me measurement is exactly on the size four um my waist measurement is actually an inch smaller than the zero the zero is 25 inches and mine's 24. Uh, the hip measurement for the zero on here is 35 now my hip like my hip mo bone measurement um is 32 inches so that's three inches smaller than that and my low hip measurement which the garment wasn't going to be going that low anyway that's 34 inches so still an inch shorter than the hip measurement but so i kind of you can't you know, probably see it. so i circled that circled here so that's the zero two four so i decided to kind of go in the middle and i went for the two now um what i'd so i was expecting it to be thinking oh it will it be might be snug on the bus but when i looked at the ease the the ease was going to be two inches bigger than my bust anyway if you looked at the ease um but i did expect that it was going to be quite roomy around the bottom uh but you know what it wasn't it wasn't um i did it was fine absolutely fine um i don't know if you, I got, 
I'll put a, do you know what, I'll put some pictures up um, if I haven't shown you already and they'll be just popping up, me posing, you know. And um, I did trace the pattern because I think it's a very good idea. I think you should always trace a pattern, is my personal opinion. But I think it's especially important when you're doing a knit garment because this needs 20% stretch. Now, if I was to make this jumper again with a fabric that had more stretch, I could make a smaller one. Say if I wanted to make the jumper and it had literally had no stretch whatsoever, maybe I'd make the bigger one. So it's always a good idea to trace your pattern so you can always retrace it again. And another thing is, if I'd have cut this out, I wouldn't then have been able to do the t-shirt version because it would have ruined that. So I'd have had to buy the pattern again. So I definitely traced it out. I didn't make any alterations. Now I did think the jumper might be a bit long for my taste because I like jumpers a bit short. However, um, I used to wear a lot of low-waisted jeans. They did all get ruined, so I didn't own them anymore and everything went high-waisted. Anyway, I did... I did like low-waisted jeans and I was lucky enough, it was it during lockdown and I ordered some, just at the start of lockdown, I ordered some low-waisted jeans and I was really excited but they didn't send them because they said, oh well, sorry now we've all got into lockdown, there's no one there and then eventually they did turn up and I, I was so excited about these low-waisted jeans and then I tried them on and then be because the fashion has changed, yes! Is it, oh, is it lunch time? Uh, well, I'm ready to move the chicken wings. Okay, all right. Okay, all right. This second. Well, I can't do anything else. Okay, all right, okay, I'll come well, and help. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Right, I'm back. I'm so sorry about that. I didn't even say goodbye to you because my husband, he wanted me there and then. Basically, my husband has been building a man cave in the garden and he needs to get electricity to it. So he's got to dig a trench uh, to put armoured cable to get electric down there. But the chicken coop and the run was basically in the way of that path. So uh, he's like dug around and things and he wanted my help and uh, our eldest son's help to basically lift it and move it. So I've been out there in my pyjama bottoms, in my crocs, my, my fur line crocs, um, moving this chicken coop. I'm so sorry. And he's like, you, you're always doing a video when I, when I want you. And uh, last thing I did do one last week, did I? So uh, anyway, where, what have I told you about this linden sweatshirt? So the fact used right was this gorgeous sweatshirt fabric and, and it's this now i ordered two meters of it i got it from sewing street and it's basically it's got like a sweatshirt kind of it's a sweatshirt fabric but it's really soft inside and uh you know it has 20 percent stretch i did test the stretch I don't think they've got any more of it actually but and I bought uh, and it's got glitter and the glitter in it you probably can't see that on film is a, a product called Lorex you can knit with Lorex you can get Lorex in fabrics there's all dust everywhere now there's not it's not ghost orbs or anything and uh, and basically um, yeah it's great it's really lovely I love pink and I love glitter and I'm really delighted with it and I ordered two meters and look this is how much I'll try and hold it at the salvage edge um, and this is I've got loads left really I've got all these like little bits I've got all this <laughs> so I don't know what I'm going to make with that yet, but I've also got it in navy and I am going to make another jumper. Um, so I'll, I'll, I'll talk about plans at the very end, I think. So, yeah, so what else do I need to say? So it's uh, the linden, the fabric, but care. I washed that at 40 degrees and then it, and you're not meant to um, tumble dry Lorex. I did tumble dry on the lowest possible heat and it did absolutely nothing the full cycle of this low heat so i um i did it again on one notch higher and it was still soaking wet so in the end i thought i don't want to risk it going too hot um so i put it on my um my dry too soon my dry soon it's called a dry soon 
you get it from Lakeland and you plug it in. It's a it's a fancy clothes horse that you plug in and it's got a cover on it, an optional cover, and I call it the dry soon. Dry too soon. <laughs> I'm getting myself confused now. It's because I've got a nickname for things, you see. And uh, do you know what? I've never actually shown you, but I'm going to take a photograph of it. I'm going to show you the dry too soon. So, uh, <laughs> so there it is. Hopefully you can see it. So I dried it on there. Now that can get quite hot. So I was a little bit worried, but do you know what? It was fine. It was absolutely fine. And what I'll do is when I, with that garment now, I'm not going to tumble dry it. I'm going to wash it. Um, and I'm going to dry it on the dry too soon and hopefully we'll see how that goes um, so I've put about that the top stitching uh, the only thing I did different to the pattern it gives you all different ways of doing your top stitching around the neck and around the band and they're optional you don't have to do it and they give you different ways I didn't do any of the suggestions I just did um I've got a, um, a stretch straight stitch on my machine and I use that I didn't twin needle I didn't zigzag I just did that and I've done that before a couple of times on things and I quite like that finish um how I sewed it together I sewed all the seams on my overlocker I did a test piece is this the test piece yeah I did a test piece first on my overlocker that was this I was really happy with the results. I always tend to do this because you never know what's going to happen. You don't want to do it on your pieces you've cut out. Um, so I said all the um, the pieces together because it was raglan. Did all that in the side and here. But I did all the the neck, the cuffs, and the band on my sewing machine. Um, the reason I do that, you can do them on your overlockers. But the thing is, it's quite possible you're going to get a pucker. Um, when you do those kind of things anyway I didn't actually get one this time but you know it has happened in the past now if you need to unpick it I think it's just that tad bit easier to unpick sewing stitches um, rather than undo um, you know overlocking stitches so I did that and then I just you know and it's not going to fray anyway so now I did my little top stitching after and I'm really happy with that um the only thing I would say is I normally do something with neck bands on jumpers and things and I didn't do it this time and I think I probably should have um I cut it exactly the size that it said and when I was stretching my neck band to fit the jumper I was having to stretch the life out of it because I thought I was just thinking this isn't going to fit. I was so worried I was going to get to the end and I was going to have this big pucker, but I managed to do it. I didn't get any puckers, but I only just about, and that was absolutely pulling this net band. Now, what I would normally do is I would cut a net band out bigger than what the pattern says and I would test it and just kind of like ease it around. Say, like, half it the net band put it in the middle and kind of ease it round and see what I think and had I had done that I probably would have made the net band a little bit bigger than the actual one was but you can't blame the designers for that because it's just your fabric so um like this fabric you just about got 20 percent stretch out of it it was like a push kind of thing but some might easily get into 20 percent stretch so it might have been maybe using a stretchier fabric so i think that's everything i need to say about that linden i, I will make it again um i think i would consider shortening it um for my higher waisted jeans for a future one might try a lighter weight fabric but it's definitely going to be a go-to jumper if I need a jumper in a flash pretty quick. I could have literally cut it out. Well, I basically have traced and cut out in the one day, sewed on the other day, photographed it. I could have probably have done it all, all in one day, really. It's just because I didn't have the time to to do it kind of thing. And you've got to keep your husband happy and spend a bit of time with him, haven't you? You can't just sew all the time. So that's that. So unmandy unboxing, right, hope. I'm just seeing, obviously I can't see how long this video has gone on for now because it's in two parts. So it's only telling me I've been on for seven minutes, but I know obviously it's longer. So 
Okay, Monday unboxing. So you know what the download project was this time. It was pumpkins and we had the ability to buy a kit. And because we're in the club, we get a 10% off that kit. I've done that before with that Gun and Bag. That was a download and then I bought the kit stuff and I didn't use my code and I didn't get the 10% off. But um, there wasn't a project to make as such in this one. Uh, like a little kit of anything but you've got a little wooden um it's kind of like a button it has got holes but not in the center and it says the secret society of um red um oh, i'll read it properly secret society of red work and crafty loveliness that's what it says on there so that is the one item we got we did get sweet do you know what? I know I took a photograph of this kit and I've eaten the sweets and I can't remember what they were. We got um, a water erasable pen. I have got those pens, but, you know, another one is going to come in handy. And, uh, right, oh, this is was the instructions for the pumpkins. Obviously, I had to download those. That didn't come in the post. We did get, right, this one an A4 plastic sheet in this one. Now, I, I must admit, when I found it, um, like a folder, I did think it'd been put in there by mistake. And, um, and then somebody put, oh, why did we get a plastic thing this time? Right. And then I re now I realise why. Um, basically, it's for putting your blocks together. Now, up until this point, you should have already stitched four blocks. If you've watched my videos before, you know that I've not been stitching them. I signed up and I'm just doing all the little projects. So, this is the, the booklet we got this time. And um, Mandy um, spoke a bit about Black History Month and about her trip to South Africa and about a quite an inspirational story about a lady there um, that was kidnapped um to be a young bride and had and had a baby and things and her story that was very nice to read and it says this month's parcel contains an iron-on transfer for block five a water erasable pen halloween sweet ah, i remember what they were they were a little bag of tang fastic harry harry bows um instructions how to put the first blocks together a wooden secret society button to decorate denim or red work bag. Ah, okay. And uh, a download for your free pumpkin patterns in three sizes and go to the secret society homepage to do that, which I did. So there's a few pictures of um, Mandy. Uh, no, there were two pictures in South Africa with Pamela that she spoke of and, uh, and a picture of a quilt that was dedicated to Harriet uh, Tubman um, some um, you might have seen a film actually about that you may have I haven't seen it um, there's a uh, let me have a look uh, basically um, Mandy talks about her inspiration for block five and uh, and then she and there's a little thing about what, what Mandy's going to be doing. She's going to be on the John Scott show and she's going to be demonstrating in Gingerbread House and things. And she tells us what our discount code is and, we might, and we're going to need a wadding and things. And on the back, there's a recipe for Mel's Apple Oat Betty. And I've not cooked that. Um, so that is that. And then this is basically the bit in the middle. And it's instructions for joining your blocks together. Now, there has been a bit of confusion. Now, I must admit, when I first gave a mind, I was a little bit confused because this is the block you get for this month, block five, and it's larger um, than all the other blocks that we've received so far. But um, from reading what people are saying, I think that it's meant to be larger. I think the, uh, when you read, I've read a previous email of Mandy's, they're not all the same size. So don't panic. It's not a mistake. Um, also, people have said they've had a little bit of trouble getting this to transfer. It does look quite pale. The ink, I don't know if the machine ink was running out. But you can always get your light box and trace over it. Hello. I was my middle son. 
the after lunch because what the plan was I was going to do this video sort lunch in the middle for lunch time because I've had to nip and help with this chicken run it's took up a bit of time so I've not finished right so <laughs> oopsie so that is meant to be big so don't panic and then there's this now this is to show uh, and a quarter of an inch all the way around the seam to show how you space your blocks out basically so if you've got any pre what I think you meant to do is trace with a pen that that onto there then you've got that design to place on your blocks so you can work out the spacing so where your line would be you add a quarter of an inch and that's how you I hope that makes sense I think Mandy has put some more instructions on the Secret Society website so if you're struggling check that out and you know just I'm sorry I can't help you more because I haven't made them so I, I kind of regretted not making them because I could have showed people then what you'll find is when you've sewn your four blocks together you're gonna have some spaces some white spaces and Mandy's given you some designs to basically fill in those spaces I think you you basically you do continue a shed there by the look of it but I think you can just choose them as and where you want to put them so that's that is this month's secret society so um I haven't done loads of warnings this time because I think everybody would have had them um one other thing I need to I wanted to mention when I ordered the fabric from sewing street um i did order something else i got a book um, i'm not planning on making anything out of this just yet called so many dresses so little time i think this is quite a popular book um that will i will be making a future dress out of that and because the day that i ordered i got um, a sewing street badge to add to my pin collection so that is that uh let's have a look um do you know what i was going to chat to you a little bit about something to do with pants making uh but i'm going to leave that because of the length of the video and i'll look at that next time one quick thing is i had never washed any of my quilts that i've made in the past and, uh, and I know they go crinkly after you wash them. And I know some people, as soon as they make quilts, they want to wash them straight away because they love that crinkle look. But I kind of look like the look how mine looked. And I did, was a bit fearful of them going crinkly. But I was forced into it. I was forced into washing this cushion cover that I made. And um, yeah, and do you know what? I don't, I, I don't know if you can see on here, but... I now have also fallen in love with the crinkle look so I am never going to be fearful again of washing a quilt or a cushion kind of quilted cushion I've made because I, you can't really see the on, on camera I don't think but it actually gives it a gorgeous finish and I'm really pleased so I'm really pleased about that um I'm jumper I think I'm going to make with the navy version of this glitter fabric I think I'm going to make the Sew House 7 toaster sweater I, I don't know which one I'll make maybe I'll make version 1 I'm not sure maybe version 1 I don't know maybe version two i like them both actually so i might make that and i have ordered um the nina lee south bank sweater i only popped that in my basket because i was ordering a pattern for my son now i've mentioned have i done i've said this haven't i um i've mentioned to you before that i home educate my middle son and we're doing a cosplay project we've done a mood board now he has changed his mind quite a few times in the past which character that we're going to make the outfit and he has changed his mind again so i've had to order something else it's not the, exactly the right pattern i'm going to have to take bits of this and bits of this and while i was ordering from there it was from minerva and i'm in their club now so i get 20 percent off um i popped in the um the south bank sweater as well and that might have arrived when i had to rush off away from this video um there was a delivery that had got put in my brown bin 
my recycling bin and then I after getting in from the chickens I quickly um, went to the toilet and I came down and I've got three things here so I, I would have if this video wasn't so long I probably would have opened them and shown you what they were but I'm going to save those for next time I know what this is this is going to be my yarn so I will be able to make that goose that I wanted to make um, I've uh, another quick thing is for the first time ever I've sent some files um, to be printed for me some dressmaking files now don't ask me what files I've never done this before I've always just printed them out myself and stuck them all together but I just wanted to see if I could do it so I did it and I've sent off three files to Guthrie and Garney and I know they've been have been dispatched whether those are in here I don't know I'm not quite sure they might be here I don't know but I've tried that out I know one of them one of the patterns I sent off I know I've already printed it out myself but the size in the test square was coming out a little bit small it is a knit pattern and I know it wasn't going to matter a great deal but I just thought well I'll get it the proper size and I'll see how different it looks so um so I've sent off those off to Guthrie and Garney they might be here or they might be on the way the Poppy to Fray Club has started I mentioned that in the last time so it is too late to sign up now uh, the first project has been released I haven't made those because what it is uh, it's school holidays now Halloween school holidays Days. and you know what I'm kind of in autumn and Halloween mode and I don't I don't think I feel like doing Christmas this week I think I want I'd rather get um you know people back to school back to college and then think about Christmas I know I've been doing Christmas all throughout the year but this week I'm going to concentrate on the children autumn Halloween and get in that kind of mode so Christmas I'm putting aside um so uh, I did get a lovely mention uh, on Sewing Street. Fiona Hesford was uh, on Sewing Street. So I made, a, I made a point of sending the photograph of the top that I showed you that I made last time to just support Fiona. And uh, they did, they showed my picture and uh, Fiona um, gave me a lovely mention. And Vicky um, Gordon, uh, she was presenting, I don't know if, I don't even know Miss Stillwood just got married so I don't know if that's a maiden name uh, or a married name but uh, she gave me a little mention as well so I have thanked them so thank you to both of them and actually I ordered something from Fiona's um, web shop I did mention it to her and she actually refunded me and said Merry Christmas and I think that's one of the things that has arrived so do you know what I'll show you this another time but I recognise that so that was really lovely Fiona so I'll, sh I'll show you what she sent me and I think that's it I know I was going to mention these pant things um I'll mention one thing to do with pants in oh yes right so magazine I subscribe to so magazine digitally now and in there you could order a book for free and just get the free postage I don't know if it was this one or last one but it was one of them and I've ordered it and it's basically a knicker book basically uh, making knickers and I think some of them are woven so I'm going to be making that and there was another freebie and and it was this one Mandy was in it and there was a and you could basically get a download for a, a hanging heart and it's I'll, I'll try and show you on here I'll take a photograph of it doesn't work out well it's basically a Santa you've seen these hanging hearts I've made before here's like one of them made that one I've, got, I've made loads of these things now so uh so it's going to be a Santa one so and that was a nice freebie so yeah I think that's everything I want to show you today I'm sorry this is video is probably going to be so long and a bit a bit of a crazy one but uh you know you kind of know what I like I'm like if you've watched a few of my videos but um hopefully I'll be back soon um with some more makes and I can show you what has been arriving and things and hopefully another jumper maybe the coat maybe I don't know if the pattern gets released soon so so thank you so much for watching and uh and I'll be back soon hopefully with some more makes thank you bye